As for dietary supplements, there are two very common forms of thiamine that you see in supplements, and those are thiamine mononitrate and thiamine hydrochloride. Thiamine mononitrate is more stable than the hydrochloride form, but it's less soluble in water. Because of this, you will typically see the mononitrate form in multivitamins or when the thiamine is found in a pill because the shelf life is preserved a bit more in this form. This form is also com is more common in food and pharmaceutical preparations because of its better stability. The hydrochloride form is more water-soluble, meaning it mixes better in water, essentially. And because of this, it's more common to see this, this form in powder formats like electrolyte, workout, or vitamin and mineral supplements that you would scoop and then mix in some kind of liquid. Both forms are equally suitable for supporting thiamine status. There is another form of thiamine that you may seen, may have seen or heard of, and that is benfodiamine. This is a synthetic form of thiamine. In other words, this is not a naturally occurring form of thiamine, but made to imitate the natural form while having potentially greater absorbability compared to other forms of thiamine. This form of thiamine is more fat soluble, which does allow it to pass more easily through cell membranes in the intestines. It was also made to last longer in the body compared to regular thiamine. This form of thiamine does also seem to be well tolerated. Supplementation of thiamine is really the only time you'd find yourself taking in very high concentrations of thiamine that might lead you to wonder whether or not you're taking in too much thiamine. Thiamine, when taken orally, is generally well tolerated. Your body excretes ex excess amounts of thiamine very effectively through urine. The Food and Nutrition Board of the National Academy of Medicine did not set a tolerable upper intake level, also called the UL or upper limit for thiamine. The reason being is that there's no well-established toxic effects from long-term consumption of thiamine through food or supplementation up around 50 milligrams per day. The current leading thought on the matter suggests that absorption of thiamine declines rapidly when ingesting over five milligrams at a time. Now, to be clear, there don't seem to be many negative effects from taking in higher doses of thiamine orally. However, there are reported instances of potentially life-threatening allergic reactions and seizures when thiamine doses that are 100 to 200 times the RDA are given intravenously, so through an IV. There are many public organizations that support the current RDA for thiamine intake. There is also a perception that thiamine deficiency has been erased or is uncommon in more developed countries like those in the United States and Europe. However, there is a growing body of evidence that paints a bit of a different picture, one where subclinical and even true thiamine deficiency hides behind more common symptoms of metabolic disorders and that less thiamine availability and bodily activity may not be because we aren't taking in enough thiamine, but it might be because we're overexposing ourselves to anti-thiamine factors present in the diet, but also present in other forms like routine use of some medications, alcohol or tobacco, and nicotine-based products.